All right, guys, Copper Cutlass here. In a perfect world, I would have been out here working already, but due to being an adult, I had to do things. Like you can see, I started like power washing my fence somewhere like over there. Somewhere, you really can't tell, but it looks way better. Uh, I picked up the transmission. It's sitting on the wagon over there. I'll talk about that later. Um, I went and I got goodies from O'Reilly's. My wife picked up my oil pan gaskets from AutoZone. Um, I went and I picked up the distributor from my buddy's place. I got spark plugs. I got various spark plug sets from him. He really hooked me up. Big thanks to him. And um, actually, it's in a box over there. But uh, it's becoming messy, and I kind of cleaned up. I put my slicks up there. I put the car covers back in the house. Uh, I reorganized here because I also picked up an AC unit for the garage, like from a resort, like a hotel room. Um, then I had a Turbo 350 that I had in the back of the Suburban for two weeks. That's a future project for a friend. Um, so, yeah, it's becoming kind of claustrophobic here. So I'm going to clean up, organize, and then we're going to button up. I'm calling it the Wuhan 455 because that's fucking hilarious. So, um we're going to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap it up and paint it tonight and get things set up for us here. So uh, for now, I'm going to finish cleaning up. I just kind of wanted to fill you in on how sometimes being an adult sucks, but we have to do it. You know, there, there's, there's no better joy than picking up dog turds on an 85-degree day. It's just lovely, but I have to do it. So, yeah, a little bit of a delay but it's going to get done, and we pretty much have everything we absolutely need right now. We have nothing else we need, as far as I know. So, I'll let you guys go. Cheers. Not me. Well, my beer's over there. But So, the distributor I got for my buddy won't work out. And I'm going to gut this thing and pretty much use all of the good components for the GM unit I got here on the vice. So... The biggest reason why I couldn't use it is because the bronze gear is drilled for a stock roll pin, stock diameter roll pin, which PRW did a very good job of making this because it's actually the correct diameter. The roll pin diameter for the distributor shaft on the, on the JEBS unit, which is an overseas unit, probably made by ProComp or whoever the fuck makes it for them, it's different. So what I ended up doing was I ended up adding a shim underneath the gear to take out some of the end play so it wouldn't be as sloppy. There's thoughts on that. And um, you can see how stiff these weights are. They bounce right back. These on here, they got some super light springs that are almost useless. They just move around. They almost don't do anything. So... Either way, they do return, but it's like with centrifugal force. And either way, on this car, I'm going to end up locking out the timing. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to end up welding this shut. But for startup purposes, I'm just going to leave this as is and take the distributor back apart and weld it because I don't have a welder here. So I'm going to end up taking the module out and see how good that is. I'm keeping the stock GM one just in case. And then pretty much I'm using the cap, and, and that's that's pretty much all I'm using out of this. Unless there's other components like the pickup that's that's bad or something, and um, that's about it. So this is uh, I just picked this up today, so I haven't I haven't had this, and uh, you know it's a distributor is real nice. The pickup's good and everything. I'm just curious if the shaft diameters would even be the same between all that stuff, which it, it, it should be. But uh, then again. The roll pin diameter was different, so I wasn't able to actually use this entire distributor, which is kind of a fucking waste, but hey, I got it, and I'm in it for X amount of dollars, plus the bronze gear, so for now, we're just going to make it make it do what it do, and I'm still kind of ahead of it, really, if you think about it, because I didn't spend a lot, so uh, either way, I'll let you guys go, and then we'll update you guys on what the engine looks like in the next segment so we'll let you guys go all right guys so the engine's assembled and um if you guys saw in that earlier video you saw me pretty much gut this perfectly brand new never used distributor for parts which if i hadn't gotten it so cheap 
I would have probably waited and drilled it and you know made it work with a different roll in, but I decided not to because it's not what this build is about. So, uh, and again, what are you doing? Sorry, I gotta yell at my dog. Um, so yeah, I mean, engine's done. Everything came out good. Uh, my buddy made a good call to check the balancer and it was off by two degrees. He told me it will be off by two degrees. But before we talk about that, boom, there it is. It's fucking done. I went with the beautiful Detroit Diesel Green, Alpine or Aspen Green, whatever the fuck they call it. And uh, it's just dressed up for now, so you guys got something pretty to look at. I mean, I don't know how, if it'll run as good as it looks, but um, we'll find out. And I think my buddy and I have a goal in mind based off of what the, th this pretty much similar combination ran in another car. And by the numbers, it should do so well with the right combination of everything and we'll see if not then this is this actually would be really good in my car because my car would be really really close to what it was in uh, my car is lighter um, but gear wise and everything this actually in my 72 cutlass would be really good to see if we can go run faster than the 1150 that this engine powered a 75 Le Mans to weighing in at 3,700 pounds. So, uh, it's pretty much done. Uh, everything came out good. Um, now, I always wondered what these dowels were about. I'm gonna guess the original builder did these. Those are actually to guide the gasket. These two bolts up top on each side are almost useless. And in a lot of the, you know, um, the newer style Oldsmobiles, it's only five bolts for the valve cover versus 10. So that was pretty ingenious of him. I went ahead and I RTD'd the gasket to the cover, but not to the actual cylinder head. I've never had an issue with that. I went ahead and the uh, water pump from our small block, I went ahead and I just cleaned it up, painted it with cast iron gray um, because I like the abstract and colors or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Obviously the Demon carburetor I rebuilt and we had this on the small block which is still going to be a test subject on the small block. Uh, I have a goal in mind to how fast I want the car to run um, with the carb if it does work out before we put the 4500 stall in it. Um, but yeah, from here, it comes down to what JJ wants to do, what his time frame is going to be. And like I said, ultimately, I think mid to late September, we would love, I think I would love to have this car going down the track. And I'm missing the best part out of this engine, the oil dick. I call it the oil dick because it's hilarious, but the, the oil fill too uh, is missing. I have to find it or find one. I think the guys who plug them up, it's like, dude, it's the one characteristic of the Oldsmobile that I, I kind of like. Um, but either way, these are small block headers on there just for now, and we're probably going to use them for the run stand. I got some purple horny mufflers over there. Uh, in the corner somewhere behind my weed whacker next to that 347 stroker that's I'm yet to build and um, So yeah, I'm excited it pretty much went together with no drama I mean all the hard work was done like pretty much last week. Uh, it was just hard to get out here and um, chip away at it, but um, Chip away chip away walls. Is that how they say it? No chip 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 Chippewa. Chippewa Falls. Right. Lightning Kugels. So, so anyway, <laughs> not to joke with you guys like that, but that's actually usually how I joke around anyway. But um, I am going to have to swap out fittings for our run stand because our run stand, I just used 3 8 hose with aluminum line. And this is set up for AM fittings, which is great for my car because I run AM fittings and the car that we're going to be running on runs AM fittings. But I'm going to have to steal the fittings off the Proform 6, 650 up here and um, use those in here. Uh, it's the same thread, uh, thread size, so I'm just going to swap out the bulkheads from here and use the cheapo uh, foul AN line thing that's on that fucking thing. So hopefully next weekend we'll put this on the stand. We'll be making some noise. Now I do have the distributor and the wires in there. They're just in there. I actually I have to number these because I figured out the layout. Uh, these are a little long, but it is what it is. They are actually in good condition. They might have 3,000 miles on them. And, um, but I am going to bench test the distributor um, and uh, just to make sure that it's at least putting out good spark. 
Uh, I've bench tested a lot of HEIs in the past. Um, I have to lock out the timing, but for run stand purposes, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the centrifugal uh, advanced just working. Even though the springs that are in there are mentioned earlier in the video, they're almost useless because they're, they're just flopping around. So, um, which is like a really old racer trick actually. What they would do is they would run like a medium spring on one weight and run without one on the other in various different combinations like that. Or drill the weights out for less weight so they didn't ramp up faster, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's really hard to figure that stuff out unless you really have a really good dial back timing light or you have a distributor machine. But for our purposes, we're going to run this thing with the timing locked out and I'm going to set up this distributor for that. And then actually I would love to try that out on the olds as well because I know that the, my engine would love all of that timing off the line versus having a slight ramp, which I do have. So um, for now, it's run stand time, hopefully next weekend. Uh, I think I'll set it up Saturday and we will go from there. Usually, um, I think I have everything to make this happen. The electric fuel pump, I set up a fuel cell on my run stand. Recently, for the 4302 I had on there that I had built earlier in the spring. Um, so from here, we're just gonna go forward and get it running and fired up on the stand in a little bit of runtime, make sure everything is good, nothing is puking out. Uh, and then stick it in the car. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this engine build and I hope you guys look forward to the fun we're gonna have with the car uh, that it's gonna go in. Uh, it's going to definitely be a unique setup, I'll tell you that much. Um, but we have a number in mind that I think we would both like to be at, my buddy and I. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about that until you guys actually see the car. It will explain a lot. So, either way, I'll let you guys go. Share, like, subscribe. See you.